overachieving women are going through their own scarcity curse when it comes to relationships. Attracting a relationship which is a balanced act of you being a soft feminine and him being a true masculine embodying all of the criteria that make an actual protector is something that is of interest to you. Good morning my beauty. There's a difference between a vanilla relationship and a sugar relationship. A hyper feminine woman will not go a long time single. This video is sponsored by this potion, which is for a client of mine. Overachieving women are going through their own scarcity curse when it comes to relationships. What do I mean by that? I've had a lot of clients over the years who've come to me wondering why they're not actually coupled up and basically frustrated because they see a lot of women around them who are not of their caliber getting into amazing relationships or even worse getting in relationships that my clients some of them have called boring relationships now i learned a term today i didn't know that term before and it is called vanilla relationship i'm speaking here of regular people and a regular woman who comes to me because she's going through the emotional triggers of something going on in her life that somehow even though she feels that she has control over everything this specific part she feels that she just can't get it right i learned that there's a difference between a vanilla relationship and a sugar relationship and i've had many 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 women over the years who envisioned a balanced relationship as being a transaction the goal when you come to someone like me is not for me to judge you it is to understand where you're coming from spiritually and energetically where are your traumas that basically resulted in you needing to turn up the volume of your defense mechanism in order to be in a relationship where your sole value would be a monetary or material gift equivalent. I've spoken about it in a previous video where I talked about the five sort of general archetypes of women that I have encountered in my career. I've been doing this for 22 years now. And those are women who come to me because they want a relationship. So I basically gave a breakdown of my experience encountering those women. They want to shift their energy, meaning that they've gone to a psychiatrist, most of them, or they've gone to other healers, or some of them are just plain women who are open to the notion of having energy shifting potions, who understand that their science is behind lithotherapy, behind emotional elixirs, like back flowers, for example, like pheromones, which are widely used actually in the perfume industry, even in some of the boutiques you go to, where they're basically spraying specific scents that you can't smell consciously, but that actually create a sort of subliminal response so that you want to shop. So pheromones are pretty, pretty widely available these days. And someone like me, who is a 12th generation potion maker in my lineage, it is nothing new. Anything that has to do with activating energy is really, really as old as human beings have been in existence on this earth. She comes to me because she wants a solution. And the solution is me turning her into a soft feminine woman. Apparently, if you go to any type of love or dating coach, because my clients have told me about following dating coaches, about even hiring dating coaches for some of them, a lot has to do with strategizing, with changing your behavior. So exploiting some sort of observed action leading to response from the woman towards the man, that basically there's going to do a template for or you want a masculine man, therefore you're going to act soft. What you will come to realize is that a soft woman, a true feminine woman, cannot be faked. A feminine woman, most of the time, will not go for a long time without magnetizing, without being an attraction, a magnet to relationships, specifically 
relationships with the type of men that are the opposite, the complementary aspect of us. A soft, a feminine woman, a hyper feminine woman will not go a long time single. So if you need to strategize, learn behavior, learn how to speak, learn what to say, how to dress, to go on dates and attract the attention and most importantly, the long lasting love and commitment from the type of men you desire, it is not something that you can be taught because your body is going to react to triggers, to archived limiting programming, limiting beliefs, but specifically archived trauma of being abandoned, rejected, of having to make it on your own, or archives of trauma of you having at one point or another either observed or experienced yourself being a toxic caregiver to a man, so completing a man, being the man of the man, being the mother of the man, making it easy for a man because you're so used to being on your own or you're so used to struggling. That's why you need to shift your energy. It is a transmutation process that occurs on the chemical, meaning cellular level, because you're going to be affected on the energy, aka spiritual level. The ingredients I pick for my potions, especially you know when you come with a specific situation, so you choose, like my client, a, a custom potion, I'm going to decipher specifically by scanning your energy, but also getting in contact with your energy being and your spirit guides, we will call them that, or your angels, whomever shows up, to say that there is an actual curse and those are the elements, the activations, the invocations that I have to do to bring together a specific formula which is going to suit your situation. Because a soft feminine woman, what I call a hyper feminine woman, if I give you examples of what my clients have told me, they would say that because I want to be a soft woman, a feminine woman, or a hyper, if they come to me, it's hyper femininity. Most of you watching this video are not aware of those terms. You probably are brainwashed into watching content of internet gurus who are going to extrapolate on terms that they have not been initiated at, just using generic terms like soft, feminine, or soft life or feminine energy meaning absolutely nothing if it stays on the level of mindset because if you've gone to coaches if you've watched numerous videos if you've altered your physique and you're still repelling relationships with your ideal man meaning that you're not attracting men you have to come to the conclusion that there's something else it cannot just be deciding that I want to be a feminine woman and I expect. I've had clients, not this one, but I've had clients who told me that because they had watched so much content on feminine energy, that they went on dates demanding certain things from men, demanding to go on, for example, dinner dates instead of coffee dates. Already I can tell that this is not anything that comes from the spontaneous, giggly, all trusting and fulfilled, hyper feminine aspect of a woman needing to pinpoint all of the ways in which the man she goes on the date with is not acting based on the script she expects him. To act upon. You're going to demand or to prefer or to analyze the man saying that he wants a Starbucks date as he's a cheap man. However, coming from someone of my background, for example, but also someone who just doesn't enjoy going out at night. I'm a spiritual. I am very careful about where I bring myself into what kind of scenery, context, social event I'm going to allow my gorgeous, highly heightened energy self, you know, to go to. So in my experience, dates for me are spontaneous. They come from feeling a true connection and genuinely knowing that meeting the person was the normal sort of next step 
There was no such thing as I need to book my calendar. I need to schedule dates because I'm taking this dating thing like it's a job. I actually preferred more casual dates. Dates in a nice hotel because I love tea time. So I would have like scones, you know, tea sandwiches, nice juices, nice pastries. Pastries are my favorite. Why would I actually commit me? my precious time to a full-on dinner to a person that I actually have never met because I can buy myself the most scrumptious dinner. I don't need anyone to buy that for me. So it's about feeling that it is the next natural step to meet this person when there's already a connection, when there's eagerness on their part to meet me. A hyper-feminine woman never ever wonders who's ever going to pay. It is not a question. The majority of the time, because the encounter is so fulfilling for the man, it's so genuine, it's so unscripted, that as a hyper-feminine, I've only attracted dates and have not gone on many with men who already aligned to that. So there was nothing I needed to do because I was already embodying the things that I did or I do, I still do on my regular dates with the man who has my heart and my body. It comes from genuinely wanting to renew the commitment and the promise to be together and to support each other in whatever specialty each individual shows up with. Anything that you're going to do on a date is always going to be a reenactment, a feedback of what you already are. That's why when you are starting on this journey of being an overachiever, because clients who come to me are overachievers for the majority, overachiever in either needing to work hard, needing to prove to themselves and others that they are worthy of dot, 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 fill in the blanks, overachiever in that they're so used to surviving on their own or they've only witnessed other women struggling in the day-to-day -day regular mundane activities of life that it is an actual plug-in, a programming on their energy system they can't do otherwise. A woman who embodies her hyper femininity. And this reminds me of something that I have seen on TikTok. It's like a parody of a woman being with her man and being, when I'm with my man, I can't lift anything. I can't do anything physically difficult. And when I'm by myself, I can carry a sofa by myself. Think, I mean, I'm caricaturing, of course. When you start embodying it is when you start doing the rituals of sacred self-seduction. The moment you enter into the acknowledgement that you are an actual divine being, a goddess, or at least you have that goddess essence, even if it's just a mindset thing, even if it's just something that you feel that, yes, every woman is a goddess, yeah, of course. But the moment you have an acknowledgement of that, an observing of that, and the fact that you are that, Maybe you haven't explored that route in the past, but in order to be divine and sacred, what do you have to do? You have to perform sacred divine things. Just like someone who is a professional athlete. To be a professional athlete, he has to perform repetitively a specific amount of tasks that reinforce him or her being a professional athlete. To be a hyper-feminine, you have to do hyper-feminine things. The moment you start shifting by doing your daily tantric rituals, activating what makes you a woman, your womb, your sexual energy, doing what I teach, the sacred moaning, which is as old as life itself. You know, the creation itself, what scientists call the Big Bang Theory, is what? The masculine and feminine cosmic force coming together in that Big Bang, this explosion, the climax that led to creation, which all of us are born biologically in our anatomy to to mimic through the climax of the lingam, you know, the phallus and the woman, the yoni or the woman's intimacy coming together for what? To become one and have this climactic explosion. So I talk about pleasure principle. If you feel, if you understand that your body is a temple, you've gone to temples. They're purified constantly. They're ornated, embellished based on the philosophy of faith of the people who go to either that temple or that place of worship. 
and they have to be what? Anointed. It is even in every sacred text. The Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedas, even if you go to Sufist texts. And of course, coming to someone like me, you know, coming from a lineage, an ancestry of healers, an indigenous person protecting this tradition. You have to anoint your body to make it sacred using specific elixirs, specific resins, specific elements that come from nature herself that we learn to activate through our gifts. And that's when there's an element of magic that takes place. If you need to be an overachiever, become an overachiever in your own transformation. Because I can give you a template, a guideline of how to be a sacred or soft feminine woman. For this, I will not use the word hyper feminine because to be a hyper feminine, you have to earn it. You have to really transform to be it. Not everyone can claim being a hyper feminine because the hyper feminine does not have an agenda. Her only agenda is her own expansion. And it is through learning, how to shift her energy, observing her trauma, releasing the trauma, replacing it with pleasure, joy, higher vibrations, enjoying her own company, loving her reflection in the mirror when she does her feminine, sacred feminine ritual, that she starts the energetic mating dance with herself, which fills her up. And when you're full, what happens? Men chase you because there is nothing juicier than a woman who shows up both vulnerable yet fulfilled. You're already everything you need to be within your own integrity, integrity of your body. So the man is going to reward you for showing up already a trophy, but in the most genuine meaning of the word. Not as in, I bought the clothes, I wore the perfume, I embellished my body, whether by buying new clothes, by dieting or gaining uh, curves, whether it is natural or uh, surgically enhanced or medically enhanced, whatever. All of that cosmetic, you know, cosmetic meaning superficial on the outer layer but still showing up like some of my clients tell me, showing up and stating their achievements on a date because all they know, all their energy is combative. All they know is I am this caliber of, so when I go on a date, he better be of the same level or higher. There's an expectation because I am such a high caliber, high value woman. But one thing I would know, and this is really not just even energy, but one thing I will know from having been around, kind of men that I believe are good, balanced, ambitious, and ready to be in an exclusive, committed relationship. Those types of men, what I've seen over the years, being around them or hearing about them or you know, being in social circles where some of them are, it is that, and especially for the high caliber men, they do not care about your trophies. All they care is, are you a trophy for them? Are you exhibiting the type of energy they want to be around with at all times? Are you filling up their cup? That's how, that's the only way you can leave any date and the man actually misses you. It has nothing to do with who calls, who doesn't call first, whatever rules there are, because I've heard it all by now. There is no such thing because when I go on a date, I'm so used to dating myself by taking myself on those dates, eating the best food, dressing for myself, loving myself, and filling up myself energetically, seeing myself, but really holistically as the gift I am for me, because I'm expanding for me. The rest comes naturally. So when I show up giggly, loving myself, enjoying myself, looking at the venue, feeling like, oh my God, the pastry is so good. The venue is so nice. I love it. I love the company. I'm not trying to prove anything. It's not a competition of who went to the most countries, who went to the most operas. It's not about that. It's about the genuine connection. And if on a date, I would feel like not speaking and just looking, admiring the man and admiring everything that's around me and feeling it, like feeling that joy, like, and you know, the moan worthy experience. It is because I've practiced it so many times that whenever I am anywhere, it doesn't matter it is still a reenactment of what I know that I am. So when I finish the date, if it were a date that we need to separate after or go our own ways, like for example, we have lunch dates once a week because we have other types of dates, but like this one date that we have over lunch at the same place. So then afterwards goes to his 
company and I go do whatever I have to do. I bring myself full. So I'm not thinking about what happened on that date. I'm not thinking about what we ate. I'm not thinking about what we spoke about unless it was something that he asked me or something that has to do with our daily, day, you know, routine. But other than that, I'm living carpe diem moment to moment. I'm still being myself in the present moment because I'm always full. And if I'm not, I know that my morning and evening rituals are that for a reason. The meditations are there for a reason to connect to, okay, what triggered me today? What went wrong today? Because we're still living a human experience. So we're still going to have little problems happening. Me having my own business, I'm going to have a lot of logistical situations I have to take care of, you know, receiving things, shipping things, receiving ingredients, not being home or my assistant not being home when they deliver it at our studio, anything, kids having to take care of stuff, having to do shopping, groceries, whatever. Life is still going to happen. Happen. So yes, you're going to be triggered during the day. Sometimes, you know, there's so much to do and so little time that you may even feel overwhelmed. You go back to your morning and evening ritual so that you don't go to sleep carrying the trauma that it's going to have time to linger on your energy body and you wake up because you did the ritual before going to sleep. You wake up energized instead of waking up depleted, tired, or even suffering from insomnia and all of the stuff that takes place when you don't go to sleep full. So I think you've got the point. Let me just show you once again how gorgeous she is. My potions are truly a labor of love for my clients gratitude for my clients honoring their vow or their soul contract of coming to me paying me me looking for the best ingredients the best formulation but also the best protocol to serve them and you know to be to stick with me on their treatment you know because it's six months six months is you know it's half a year it's commitment six potions evolving with the potions but when you think about it, six months is really nothing. When you've had 20 years of going around in circles in the hamster wheel of whatever issue you're circling around without actually feeling like you're thriving in that area of your life. Six months is nothing, right? Six months is nothing compared to the amount of confusion, trouble, pain, procrastination, anger sometimes, or complete depletion of energy that you've experienced for a lot of my clients for a long time, that they've calcified, hardened so much in their reality that they show up as needing to be. A man trapped in the woman's body, an achiever, you know, having to state their resume on their dates to prove almost like an arm wrestling match of of, I'm better I can do it better I can and then you expect the man to be fully a man with you when you're not even vulnerable when you're not fragile like I said hyper feminine women naturally embody the perfect the ideal partner so they're never single for a long time because they're oozing sensuality they're oozing being full of that energy that men just can't get over and they're emotionally autonomous they don't rely on outside clues to tell them whether they're doing good or not in their life it is a magnificent place to be in as a hyper feminine <laughs> okay i love you i hope you enjoyed the video and um, see you in my next one manifest lavish imperial divine opulence i love you take care bye